1660 um, diagonal from the Jonah Water Tower. Our building is amazing. Um, if you've gone to Curly, you've kind of seen somewhat of the way the building is laid out. One of the unique features of the building is we have something called neighborhoods. These are the open spaces where students can be sent out from the classroom to go and do group work, collaborative work, helping them to be better prepared for what they'll see once they graduate high school. These neighborhoods will also be filled with very colorful, flexible furniture, which is going to increase the students' desire to work collaboratively mm -hmm. and just be excited about the learning. Also something unique to this building is we will have teacher pods. This is where our teachers will come together in one room and they will collaborate. And it won't be a homogeneous, meaning only math, only science, only English. It will be heterogeneous such that we have a math, a science, history, English, and an inclusion teacher all in this pod to where we talk about our students' needs. And that leads to the teaming piece where we're looking at the student holistically. That's one of our mission, or that is our mission at the ninth grade center, to take care of the students' needs holistically. Um, the social emotional learning, all of those different pieces. And then if you ever received the email from me, or if you heard what Mr. Pettis just said about SHINE at the nine, SHINE is an acronym and it stands for who we are at the heart of the ninth grade center. S stands for students are priority. We want to make sure we take care of our students' needs and we're going, everything we do is going to be funneled back or you can trace it back to how we're adhering to our students' needs. H stands for harvesting relationships. Anyone who's been in education, read any books about education knows that relationships go a long way. There's a quote that talks about that students don't care unless you know they care first. So building relationships will be at the heart of what we do. Also, I stands for innovative and inclusive instruction. So we have this beautiful facility, so we get to learn how to work collaboratively, be, in, uh, be innovative in how we teach and learn, because teachers and students are learning, and make sure that our students see themselves in the learning and the teaching, and just be innovative. N stands for never ceasing to grow. So our students are learning as well as us as teachers learning. We talked about the teaming, also PLCs, professional learning communities will be big. So we as teachers will continue to grow. We need to grow because we want to be able to better serve our students as they continue to grow and born digital and all these different things. This is what the pandemic showed us um, this year. And then E, effective communication. Um, communication from student to student, teacher to student, teachers to parents all of those different pieces, creating that triangle to make sure that our students are successful. So essentially that's what SHINE is and that's who we stand for. As far as the bell schedule is concerned, this is another question that's been raised. We will follow the same bell schedule as the high school. We currently will be sharing some teachers, so we want to make sure that our bell schedule is aligned. Next year we'll start at 9 a.m. and finish at 425. Okay. And then also as far as the busing system, we are moving next year to a three-tiered system so that we can make sure we take care of all of our elementary, middle school, and our high school students. One concern was, will my ninth grader ride a bus with possibly an 18-year-old? That is possible because Mr. Eckert, the Director of Transportation, he's going to create routes such that we get the kids to school safely and expeditiously. And so there may be a bus or two to where we'll pick up all of our students, drop off at the high school, and then proceed to drop off students at the ninth grade center, as well as pure freshman buses. So we're working on those things. Okay. So freshman year, as I talked about earlier, was um, about the academic piece. The freshman year is the foundation. All of their, all the students' academic pieces start at the ninth grade level. It's very important. Um, <clears throat> some of the things that you all may have filled out earlier this semester, the course selection sheets, we had one class that the students were able to pick was the career and technical education. So let me back up a little bit and talk about the schedule. Students now will have nine period days. They will have 45 minute classes. Of those nine periods, four will be core classes. So your math, science, English, and history. One will be lunch. Oftentimes that's the favorite time of the day. Mm -hmm. And then you will have four um, elective classes. That's your fine arts, your Spanish, your um, athletics. And then here you have your career and technical education course or short T, uh, CTE is the abbreviation we often use. And so here again, once you chose your, your student chose their courses earlier this semester, 
They chose an endorsement, meaning what it is they would like to do once they graduate high school. And we're going to be laying the foundation for that. They can choose STEM, business and industry, public service, arts and humanities, multiple disciplinary studies. And those um, introductory courses will be offered at the ninth grade center. Fine arts, we're just gonna to touch on this briefly. We will have theater arts at our, uh, at our campus. We'll have technical theater, theater arts, theater production, and we definitely will have UIL one act play. One thing we, we all wanna be sure we understand, we're two campuses, but we're still one high school. We work together. So our freshmen will be competing in one act play. We'll have dance. We're going to um, have dance one, which will count as our students PE credit. And then we have dance prep that's been added by popular demand. Um, students who would like to audition for high steppers will take dance prep in preparation for um, high steppers. Choir, we will have choir, band, and color guard. Choir, again, we'll have a UIL participation band. Your ninth grade student is a part of the Huddle High School Band. Let me say that again. Your ninth grade student is a part of the Huddle High School Band. Therefore, they'll be able to participate in the marching band season, support the football team um, in the fall. They'll have concert season. And we'll also have a jazz band on, comp on uh, campus. And then also Color Guard, they do a beautiful job complementing the band. And so we'll have that uh, one period. Currently, we have 21 students who signed up for Color Guard. And so they'll be learning the movement, how to use the equipment and all the skills necessary to be successful in color guard and for these programs transportation will be provided for them to go from the NGC to the high school or from the high school to the NGC depending on the season and what is going on with those okay well I've talked quite a bit and so now since the focus of this uh, meeting is athletics I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Brad LaPlante. All right well you had a, an email that uh, should have uh, already gone out uh, from the district to all of our rising uh, freshmen, uh, indicating all of our camps and uh, the head coach's contact uh, information uh, to start that communication process uh, to you. So we haven't finished our coaching staff yet. We're still hiring some of those, but we really feel strongly uh, about an awesome coaching staff uh, that we've started to create. And, and that coaching staff uh, will be a combination of people who are housed at the ninth grade center. Uh, some will teach there and coach there in its entirety. Some will teach at the high school as we alluded to earlier, sharing teachers, but then we'll come coach out at the uh, ninth grade center. And so we also want to create schedules that you know uh, as a family that your student athlete will get time and attention from the varsity head coach. So that's been a, an indication that we as coaches want to do is make sure our schedules coincide with the 10th, 11th, 12th grade schedule uh, at the high school so your freshman student athlete gets attention uh, from that varsity head coach. And so as far as our organization, uh, I am our district athletic director. And then Jennifer Hoffman is our girls athletic coordinator. And so she will have the opportunity to not only be at the high school, uh, but she'll also have uh, an opportunity to be out at the ninth grade center uh, as well. Uh, we will have two uh, coordinators, one on the girls side, one on the guys side uh, out at the uh, uh, the ninth grade center and they'll predominantly be uh, in the gym and be in the athletic realm teaching PE but also help out our coaches there and be leaders there for your student athletes on campus. Uh, we've alluded to that we will share staff uh, with the high school and that's important that we get to collaborate our staffs and make sure that both campuses uh, integrate back and forth because the offense or defense or schemes that you're running uh, at the high school will also be running uh, at the ninth grade center. Uh, as well. And of course, uh, Coach Halliburton, our district strength coach, Jason, he'll have a big focus as we open up that building uh, to be able to be out there and have the structure, organization, <coughs> technique taught right away to our awesome freshmen who will join us there in August. So then uh, as far as where our sports uh, will be located, uh, right now our female sports uh, that will only be at uh, the ninth grade center, volleyball, basketball, and powerlifting, those will predominantly be first period. And then the male sports will be predominantly ninth period with football, basketball, uh, and powerlifting. So those sports will be housed for practices all year round at the ninth grade center. As far as some sports that will not all be at the ninth grade center, such as the softball uh, and baseball, soccer, tennis, track, and cross country, 
sometimes because of facilities. We will not have a softball or baseball field at the ninth grade center. So those sports will come into the high school and next to each sport, you see the period uh, that's listed. So softball and baseball will be ninth along with tennis and then track, if it's a track only student athlete will be ninth period. If they are a multi-sport athlete, which many times track is, uh, they'll be able to come uh, after school. And then cross country for boys and girls will be first period. And then you see the soccer designated by the girls being first period and the boys being ninth. Then of course we have some uh, athletic teams who are off campus. So the golf team goes to uh, Star Ranch and then our swim team goes to the YMCA and, and powerlifting will actually be at both campuses, but the freshmen will be at uh, the ninth grade center. We'll have three powerlifting coaches um, including our strength coach to be able to teach awesome technique to our freshmen to make sure we're injury free, be it we're building up uh, those awesome bodies for those uh, young ladies and men as a particular sports they compete in. So then as far as sports uh, at the high school uh, level, there are differences. So for instance, volleyball. Volleyball within District 25-6A, the district we're in, and predominantly around the state, will have freshman teams, JV, and varsity. When it's baseball, they do not have a freshman team. They have JV and varsity. So each different sport may have a different pathway or different team uh, that student athletes will be on. So we don't want to have any confusion that volleyball has a freshman team, but baseball and softball don't have uh, a freshman team. Uh, they will go straight to JV just because of the, the really the sport uh, design. And so that's where uh, you communicate to those head coaches. And of course, at the parent meetings, they will tell you what each sport has to offer and the levels uh, that they have. Uh, we have a, a great plan going uh, so that each sport, uh, if a young lady or a young man is good enough to be varsity, we have the ability to get them from the ninth grade center to the high school to be on varsity. And many parents will ask, well, how do our high school coaches know who those uh, young men and young ladies are? Well, first of all, our uh, coordinators at HMS and FMS have probably done a great job already telling who the standout people are. Uh, of course, our coaches have been down there in the athletic periods, uh, observing the kids in the weight room and observing them in season and out of season. This summer, we have the performance camp uh, that will be going on. So that's your weightlifting and your conditioning. But within that, uh, you'll see that specific sports will have summer skills time. And so there's going to be times where, you know, the volleyball nets are going to be up, the baskets are going to be down, people are going to be out at the softball fields hitting in the cage. That's a great time for our high school staff to get a look at those uh, young athletes to see, do they have the ability uh, to compare to other athletes who are on campus and eventually make that move uh, to varsity. And of course, that head coach's evaluation is a big one this summer for some of those student athletes. And we are formulating a plan currently to make sure that if we indeed have a student athlete that is good enough to be moved up to the varsity level, we can make that happen. So that plan is currently being formulated. Okay. All right, so then where do uh, our sports uh, for each uh, competition level, where do they happen and where are they played? Uh, it used to be that on a Tuesday night, volleyball would have uh, a freshman game going on in the small gym, JV game going on uh, in the big gym, and then followed by varsity. Well, now we have this awesome uh, freshman center ready to go with a beautiful gym. Can't wait to get you out there and see it. It is fantastic. Beautiful. And the lighting is, is great. It's, it's awesome. And so what we'll do is on a Tuesday night or a Friday night, home game uh, volleyball, freshman A and B volleyball will be played at the ninth grade center then at uh, the high school campus will be JV and varsity. And that will be the same that you'll see for schedules for girls basketball and boys basketball. That those freshman teams, A and B, will be at the ninth grade center, then JV and varsity will be at the, uh, the high school campus. Football, as far as freshman A and B, that will be played at uh, Memorial Stadium, barring any more rain that we have. Hopefully that is up and rolling. So let's have uh, that great venue there uh, for those young men. Uh, and then as far as all the other sports, those will be predominantly at the high school for competition. So that's your track, softball and baseball, soccer, wrestling, uh, and tennis. 
So that is our plan going forward. We think it's a great one. We've got great new uh, facilities out there. The weight room uh, is going to be fantastic for our teams. The gym is going to be awesome. We've got new turf out there. And so it's going to be a great setup uh, for our student athletes. And we can't wait to showcase that off uh, for you. And then going forward, uh, one of the things that we will ask uh, is that we have our parents, you know, we're under one umbrella with the booster club. So that booster club will now be under four building, HMS, FMS, the ninth grade center, and also the high school. Uh, but know that your participation, your effort, your time, everything that you put in to the booster club goes to your team. So while it's awesome that we uh, have that great new gym for girls and boys basketball and volleyball, we do separate out teams. So now a JV parent will not be able to run concession while a freshman game is going on. So freshman A might be having a game, freshman B, they'll need to help us out with concessions. Then when freshman B is playing, freshman A will need you uh, to run the concessions. So uh, we do have some, well, maybe growing pains you might uh, say, but just know that we're gonna ask for help and ask for your assistance and ask for your time to make sure that the concession stands and things that we are doing within the booster club stay under that one umbrella and all the money goes to your uh, student athlete. So you can see on the screen there, there is a, a QR code that uh, if you're a parent of a student athlete, if you want to go ahead and get on there and make sure you get all the notices over the summer as we lead into an awesome 2021-2022 school year, uh, you get the updates from the booster club. Okay. So we'll go back to a QR code just to, um, for those of you, some are just joining, if they want to go ahead and use your phone to see where the QR code leads you to sign up for the Booster Club. Um, we are, again, excited to see that we have about 35 participants on. So we've gone through our spiel, tried to keep it pretty concise for you all. And now it's your turn to ask questions. So again, please go ahead and drop your question in the chat and we will answer them as they come in. And while you're formulating your question, Mr. Le Coach LaPlante just talked about um, the importance of parent involvement with the Booster Club. That is also the case uh, with us as the instructional side, the academic piece. Please, parents, you are definitely welcome on campus, and we need you to help our students be successful. So please, parents, as you are um, getting to know Mr. Morrison, getting to know myself, getting to know Mr. Perez, that we'll be reaching out to you to be a member of the PTSA, to be a member member of our parent academy and just to be a vital component um, on our campus. So looking forward to working with you all. We had something raise their hand. Okay. Maybe can't, maybe they can't. Gotcha. Okay. okay. I'm gonna stop there we go. The presenting so you can see them. Okay, so as we're working to uh, make sure that we can see your faces, we do have one question in the chat. When and where will wrestling occur? Also, we received an email regarding freshman baseball this summer. Is there any update on that? So the first question is, where will wrestling occur? So we've actually talked about that and we have wrestling currently. We're gonna probably house it at the high school. Um, but understand if it becomes a scheduling conflict or we feel like the uh, wrestling tournaments, wrestling events can be better served at the ninth grade center, then we'll move it to the ninth grade center. But as a parent of that sport, that communication will be coming to you um, from the coaches. Okay. And then as far as the baseball, uh, those schedules will be on the band app. And so on that email, there should be a link to get to all the head coaches information. So you can reach out to the head coach and hopefully get on your specific sport uh, band app and join up there to make sure you get all the pertinent information for that sport. Okay. And thank you for that question, Kristen, I mm -hmm. believe it was. Um, we now have a question from Ms. Constant Atkinson. Thank you. Will my child only be able to, I presume, play varsity or freshman volleyball, or will they be able to play JV also? So as far as volleyball is concerned, we have three levels of teams. We have the ninth grade, we have the JV, and we have the varsity. And as Mr. LaPlante stated, depending on performance and skills, um, students will be placed on those teams accordingly. So your student will either be on uh, varsity as a freshman, or they'd be the ninth grade team. When a sport has three levels, the freshman will be on either ninth grade or 
varsity. Okay. And one of the reasons we do that as far as not switching a whole bunch of kids to the JV level, the freshmen are our future. So when we keep that group together, that's really, really strong, they move up the levels and make sure that, you know, the integrity of the team uh, gets held and, and those kids uh, can be awesome together. Now, if we do have a standout, we will go to uh, the varsity level. Okay. So next question, can students that cheer participate in athletics class? We were told no. Okay, so Ms. Sydney, um, I don't know who told you no, but we are going to have first a cheer class. Those students will be transported with the athletic, on the athletic bus to, um, to the cheer class at the ninth period at the high school under the direction of Ms. Carrie Wright. Mm -hmm. um, and so we would need to look at what sport your child is wanting to play and we'll work with that student. Well, and we have a great relationship uh, between our sports team and, and our cheer. So you may have been told that they can't be in the cheer class period and the sport athletic period at the same time. So if they both happened at ninth period, you have to choose one of the two to be in. But as far as our coaches are concerned, let, let's say we have a young lady that's in cheer ninth period. Can she do track? Can she do powerlifting? As long as they're in an athletic period, they will be able to do a sport and we will absolutely work together to make sure one of the things that we value here even though we're growing and being a 6a level school we want our young men and our young women being multi-sport athletes we, the more they're involved uh, with different groups and get support uh, that's a big thing for our kiddos so that's something we definitely want to keep moving forward thank you for that question Sydney are football players allowed to wear the guardian helmet caps and do any players currently wear them during practice? So this is in my area of expertise. So I don't even know what a guardian helmet cap <laughs> is. Well, and there's two types of guardians. There's some for the seven on seven, but I presume you're talking about the covering ones that look like the eggshell that go over uh, an actual football helmet. Will they be able to have that if they uh, have their own? Absolutely, as long as it's in good condition and under, I guess, warranty, because sometimes they do uh, go out of warranty. And we do have some of those uh, currently uh, at the high school. Explain it to me again later. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll put you on a helmet. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah you wear one around for a while. Yeah, explain it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because I've seen concussion proof helmets, but I don't know what a guardian. So yes, Coastal Plan has agreed to explain it to me later. All right. You're very welcome. Um, the next question, how is a student schedule work if they are in volleyball but are not in the athletics class? Thank you. Well, somewhere along the line, they will have to be in an athletics class. So if they are just vol volleyball, they'll be in first period freshman volleyball. Um, if they are a multi-sport athlete, then they would transition kind of similar like you would have at HMS uh, and FMS, but they won't be in PE and participate uh, in athletics. So I hope that clears that up. My son is signed up for PE, but wants to participate in powerlifting, which was listed as ninth period. How can we change his schedule? So currently on the high school campus, if we have uh, a young lady or a young man who is doing powerlifting only, uh, that may have uh, been a typo on the slide. We do not have an athletic period for powerlifting. We have open weight room before and after school where the powerlifting coaches uh, open it uh, for our student athletes. And so that's when uh, the powerlifting only would get in their lift. But a lot of times within the powerlifting realm, it's cheer, it's volleyball, it's basketball, it's track, it's multi-sport athletes that are doing uh, the powerlifting. But it is possible, yes, because that sport does not have an athletic period to be in PE, yet participate in powerlifting. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, Ms. Holyby, when will skills training be released for the summer? And then second question, will, will, when will sports schedules be released? All right, so sports schedules are uh, being formulated right now. So by June 15th, if you go to rank one where all of our sports schedules are for all levels, those should be on there uh, for each sport. And then the skills training, that's another reason why we have you connected with the head coach to get on their band because each different sport has different skills time for the summer. So because that's not consistent, 
we will let the head coach communicate when that's going to be on their high school sport band. Okay. And so does that apply as well to when the trial schedule will be released? Yes. All your sports specific uh, communications and tryouts and team formulation and schedules mm -hmm. will be on the, uh, on the band app. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Holderby, for that question. Okay. Are we able to speak with you all really quick after this call? Little confused on the schedule and athletics. This is apparent. Okay. Well, Ms. Sydney, would you mind possibly um, ask, adding more questions? Because if you're confused about something, there's a possibility mm -hmm. someone else is confused. Mm -hmm. And so we'd like to address those questions. And we understand that the more involved your student athlete is, the more questions there may be uh, due to being involved in multiple things and different sports may be at different locations. So we definitely understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And this, we're definitely in a unique situation because this is brand new to all of us and we want to make sure we create the best system for all of our athletes um, to be able to compete at the varsity level, the freshman level, and we get them back and forth. And we're also able to address your questions. Um, Ms. Dixon, we do have your name, um, but if you wanna continue to try to drop questions in, um, or if you like, if, you, if it's easier to maybe unmute Ms. Dixon, um, go ahead and ask a question. You ask you. Uh, hi, this is Melanie. This is Sydney's mom. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is Brandon's mom. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, so I think we're confused on, okay, so Sydney is in cheer. So we know she has, I guess cheer is ninth period. Um, she will be in volleyball, which I guess is first period. So how how does um how will her schedule work when she's not in volleyball if she's not able to sign up for athletics so like once volleyball is over what what's going to happen with her first period because we were told she couldn't sign up i think her counselor told me that she couldn't sign up for athletics because she has cheer which i guess is an athletics class as well so the way I'm going to address that question now is um, I would look at cheer. It is a sport. And so what we probably do is have um, her in first period for first semester for volleyball. And then we'd switch her schedule at semester to then be in ninth period cheer. That's the best way I could think to take care of that right now. Well, and some of that might depend on mm -hmm. what level of cheer she makes it to, or, you know, mm -hmm. with tryouts and, and making the team too. So that, that is a, a unique situation because you're talking about a first period and a right. ninth period right. um, athletic. So, and, and we understand that those are going to be individual situations that uh, within the master schedule, yes. uh, creating that and being on two campuses, uh, that those are going to be very unique situations that those we have to sit down and still formulate uh, a unique situation plan for that. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so we you. still have so we still have time like once school starts um to get like schedules adjusted we're not like supposed to have everything sorted out like right you know prior to school starting no ma'am no ma'am we okay. have time uh to adjust the schedule to fit the needs and so thank okay. you very much for asking that question because that's a part of why we're having this forum because there may yeah. be things that we haven't thought about and that's why we need you all to help us or to pose those questions so we can then take care yeah. of well, yeah well in this unique yeah. case here because it's two different athletic periods and i think it's great that we're talking on on may 18th that you have time to talk to uh, miss wright and also get with uh, coach burns and make sure that you have uh, conversations with them so they understand the situation that your student athlete is going to be and it would be different if it's volleyball basketball and track that might all be in the uh, uh, in the same athletic period uh, and they just continue on when you're talking switching class schedules it's, it's not like we get mm -hmm. to October and switch class schedules once freshman volleyball is done you really have the class switches at the, semester. at the semester right okay 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 and yeah and that i mean that question will come up again because she does 
do basketball and soccer. So it's so, <laughs> um, you know, if, if we I guess if we get it figured out, I guess maybe moving forward, it won't be an issue. But um, but y'all see why I wanted to like not type it in. The, it was too yes. much to type. So that's why I'm like, can we speak? <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, for me, thinking about a student athlete, that's a three sport athlete plus cheer when you're talking about four different sports and activities you know that that's a lot of wear and tear on the body so uh, I, I think that's good that you'll you're probably going to want to put those four uh, leaders of those sports and activities on an email and start that conversation now and I think that would be great to get ahead of it mm -hmm. okay okay great thank you so much I'll let somebody else talk now <laughs> oh you're fine Miss City thank you Y'all okay. take care. Thank yes, ma'am. Okay. And one thing about the development of the ninth grade center, um, we are on two campuses, but we still function as one team. And so one of the things that Mr. LaPlante, Coach LaPlante talked about earlier was the fact that we're going to have coordinators. Uh, but part of that coordinated position is that they're working at the ninth grade center and working with the freshmen as well as working at the high school and communicating and building that team um, horizontally. Um, even with the teams, they're going to be traveling together. And so even though you are ninth grade, you may be on ninth grade team, you still will have that camaraderie with the students that are at the high school. So we want to make sure that we are intentional about creating those systems and making sure that we all feel as one team, whether that be as academics or whether that be as athletics, theater arts, all of those things, one team. Okay. Okay. So we have another question. Can you scroll down? It's right here. Took care of that one, yeah. Just I'm, I'm trying to understand. Go okay. I'm trying to understand. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 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 So another question: If our student makes JV or varsity team, as parents, we required to get them to the school for practices. All right. So within our busing plan, so let's say we have a, a student athlete that's on the basketball team that's at the ninth grade center. It'd be no different than any other time that you're at Hutto or Farley. If the parent drops off and picks up because of distances from uh, the school and, and the bus route, those uh, parameters would still be the same. Or if they're a bus student, they get dropped off at the freshman center. If practice is over at six o'clock at night, the parent would come pick them up. Uh, they will only for athletics be at uh, one building, I guess, at a time per sport. And the reason why we need to have that is because we can't have Oh, a locker and laundry out at one and do the same thing uh, at another. So if they do make the varsity team, that would be at the high school. So if it's a, a first period varsity team, you would drop them off. They would get bussed out to the freshman center to finish out their academic day. And they would either be bussed home or you would pick them up at the parent according to the parameters in the district and um I guess busing how far away yeah. from home yeah. they are. So we do have a plan for that busing. So both trips, uh, the parent will not be uh, responsible for. If it's an early morning practice, you would drop it off. If it was a evening practice, pick up. So only one time would the parent be responsible for that. Okay. So can you also answer the question because this has been raised before? Um, what about if they are a golf player and they're practicing at Star Ranch or if it's swim, they're yes. at the YMCA? So then we would take them from the ninth grade center to their location, and it would be just a pickup in the evening for a swim or golf mm -hmm. student athlete. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. So someone stated, Miss Angela, Angelica, I'm sorry, Angelica, Angelica Garcia, did I hear the school start in time will be later next school year? Yes, you did. We'll start at 9 a.m. next year and finish at 425. And a lot of that was driven because of the three-tiered bus system to make sure we're able to pick up and service all of our students. Okay. Keep the questions coming. These are good questions. Yeah, they are. Really good questions. Well. Anyone need to unmute themselves to ask a question? Mr. Morrison, have we forgotten anything? I just remind them of no. the general session on Thursday night. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't think we've forgotten anything. Okay. Have we forgotten anything, Coach LaPlante? No, I think the biggest thing that uh, we understand there will be some challenges and there will be some um, awesome 
things along the way, a brand new building. We're all excited about it. You know, in the email that went out to all of our uh, rising freshmen, you know, we do have student athletes that are at different stages. Some have never played organized sports. We want you to play and, and try out and, and do that at the ninth grade center. We may have had somebody that played in seventh grade, didn't play at eighth grade. They're interested in playing in ninth grade. We want that to happen. Uh, some student athletes sat out this year uh, out of respect to COVID. Come on back. We, we want you to be involved. Um, you know, as far as supporting the student athlete, you know, I'll talk about the three-legged stool uh, in some of our uh, parent meetings. So when you're talking about that three-legged stool, holding up the student athlete, one leg, the student athlete has a responsibility. The other one, we as a school um, have a responsibility uh, to that student athlete. And then the parent is the third leg. So we all have to give great support. We can't falter because if one of those legs does falter, the student athlete, uh, we know falters uh, themselves. So we're going to look for a lot of collaboration and, and the design of having these uh, young men and young women in one building uh, before they enter uh, the high school realm. Uh, I think with the growth in our district and, and where we're at, we feel really strongly about it. We've got a great administration team. Uh, you can tell the excitement in their <laughs> voice and, and they want to, they just want to see the hallways full of of kids, kids uh, yes, and, and want them on campus and go mm -hmm. and and they'll do a great job and and they were selected because of the you know band theater choir co-curricular extracurricular they believe in that and they believe in the total growth uh, of the students so uh, can't wait to see them shine out there yeah so we're excited about our students coming on board and as mr laplante just stated we're looking forward to them shining not only on the football field but also in the classroom or football basketball track whatever the case may be but in the classroom and to address your question miss atkinson the students will not be missing second period so if your student has first period athletics which will be a feature Female sport, they will be transported um, the latter part of first period in order to make it to sex pe second period on time because we do not want them to miss any of that instruction because that's very important. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, um, if there aren't any more questions, we will have another uh, community forum this Thursday. Um, it will just be general. Um, and so because we've talked about fine arts, our first session now, athletics this session, and then we'll do just general the next time. And then we'll have one talking about our special programs, which should be the 24th. And then we'll also have one on the 26th where it's talking, it'll be in Spanish. I believe we just saw one more question. Can you share the Google slide you presented with us? A great question. Um, this entire presentation will be uploaded to the NGC website. Mm -hmm. The one from the 18th will be, I'm sorry, the one from um, the day we did before, I can't remember yep. the date, um, but that will be loaded in the 18th. Every form that we have will be loaded on the website. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Please stay dry and looking forward to learning and working with you all. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Y'all take care. You too. Bye-bye. Right.